Hey everyone, DragonBlaze23 here, and I'm not guy. thanks for asking. I'm not officially back to uploading yet. This video is actually being submitted for a final for my college course, so say hello to my professor. He will be watching this. So we were given the prompt to do something with a bit of a story. So I wanted to give my story with art, as well as maybe teach you guys some of the things I've learned from art because of my journey. So whenever... So first, starting out, uh, most artists at least digitally, tend to use a tablet and a drawing pen because, you know, that's the normal thing to do. I do not do that. I use a computer mouse because starting out, I think I had an interest in digital drawing when I was in elementary school. And so at that point, I was just drawing with Microsoft Paint. And in my mind, I was just like, well, I don't even know if I can be good at this. So why should I ask my parents for this, like, expensive thing when it's like, I don't I don't know what it does, you know, like, it's just, I, I didn't know what I was doing really at the time. And so, like, my first few drawings that were, like, completely freehanding with the mouse, it was, like, it was terrifying. It, like, it looked awful, honestly. And so, in my mind, that just settled it for me. I was like, well, no, I can't, I can never ask for this. Not, not until I get better. And so it took, like, several years for me to be able to work from, like, just using the shape tool for everything to, like, being able to, like, somewhat freehand a lumpy circle that looked like a circle and not like some kid was allowed to just scribble on the monitor. <laughs> and, um, but by that point, whenever I actually got to the point where it was, like, decent, I was like, well, I can draw with this mouse fine now, so why should I try to relearn a new tool? And uh, that was also the case for me for drawing programs because my friends were not happy with me because play or let me clarify, my art friends were not happy with me whenever it's just like, oh yeah, I do this in Microsoft Paint and they're like, why? Why are you doing that? Because a lot of programs have more tools that you can use that make things easier. Such like one thing that I remember loving whenever I did eventually get convinced to switch from Microsoft Paint was that I didn't have to make a gradient by hand. And so if you don't know what gradient is, that's like where it transitions from one color to the other. And so in Microsoft Paint, I was doing those little pixels that are slowly changing colors by hand. Uh, would not recommend, is not fun, took hours, made the project a lot longer than it had to be for drawings. So instead, I'm now using Fire Alpaca and to make it a little fun, I'm gonna walk you guys through my progress of what I did for an art piece today, where it was inspired by this friend's tweet, right here, putting it on the screen, and I am drawing them as a frog. So, we're gonna start out with ignoring the several tabs of unfinished drawings. Another reason why I like Fire Alpaca is that I'm not pressured to finish them. So there's like several unsaved things here instead of worrying about Microsoft Paint crashing them and me having to finish the piece all in one day. We're gonna make a new one. I like to keep it around 1280 by 720 because that's a good size for a computer de desktop background. If you do end up liking your piece, then you can see it every day if you want. So this first part, it actually took me like forever to get into the habit of doing, but you're supposed to do a rough sketch or like some sort of sketch layer before drawing the line art. I typically just draw the line art because I'm like, I don't need this. It's fine. And it's like, well, you don't, but it makes it a lot easier if you have something somewhat planned. So we've got a rough blobby frog sketch here. It's not gonna look much like the end result, but it gives us a sort of basis on how big we want this frog to be. Okay, so once we're done with our sketch layer, we're going to do some line art. Now we're gonna draw it over it, a new layer and everything like that, lower the opacity of that sketch layer. Not a big deal if it doesn't end up looking like that. Now, you might notice, because one of the biggest uh, things I had to overcome when I started freehanding with a mouse was how wobbly my lines were. So. When I was just using Microsoft Paint, uh, zooming in was my best friend, because the more you zoom in, the steadier those lines are going to look whenever you zoom back out again. The only issue is that sometimes you'd have issues like proportioning things, but but then in FireOpaca there's another there's a correction menu that you can drop down and it actually steadies your lines for you. You just gotta find out what number works best for you. 
Because, I mean, you can put it up all the way, but it makes your lines look a little bit unnatural. That, and it, like, slows it down a lot when you're drawing it. Like, intentionally, it's meant to slow down, which is how it corrects, I guess, the wobbliness. Right, so we finished our line layer. Obviously, it does not look much like our sketch, but we got there. We're gonna move on to colors. Now, typically, you know, you pick whatever you want from the scroll wheel, all that. I am going to be picking from my friend's profile picture on Twitch. And because, I mean, I gotta be accurate to the colors to properly frogify her. So we're just gonna start out with some basic flat colors. So what that is, is that there's no shading. There's nothing like making it shiny or darkening. It's just, those are the colors. So we're just gonna add all those colors. So personally, I like using the fill tool. You just gotta make sure that your lines don't have any holes in it. If there are, you just go back, color it in a little, like finish, patch up the holes, go back, and then fill it back in again. So now that we have our base colors out of the way, we can choose to make this piece fancy. By that, I mean adding any shading or highlights to the piece. Now when I used paint, I had to like use a highlighter brush, which it was like, it would take the color and like thinly paint it over the layer and then like select that color to make it like the right darkness or whatever. Here we don't have to do that. I'm just gonna shove everything into a folder that I used as a coloring layer. I'm going to put a new layer above that and I can change what type of layer it is to make it shade or lighten up however I want. I'm just gonna use red for most of it just to keep a kind of like warm color because whatever you want like you're gonna want a consistent like color for whatever you're gonna want to use for your shading and your uh, highlights and so with the different layers it can give different effects you might want to explore for a little bit, you might decide that the color you initially picked didn't work out. Whatever, like it might take a while. But so once you have finished all that to figure out what you want, lowered the opacity a little bit maybe even, we can now add a background to our piece or just leave it as is. Either way, slap a signature or watermark on it of some kind and then boom, you're done. Those are the tips I have learned from drawing is that mainly just how to keep your hand steady or not even <laughs> not even your hand steady because mine, mine's really bad but uh mainly keeping your lines steady whenever drawing and then just different tools if you guys are starting out with this like online drawing i would definitely suggest trying to start with fire alpaca as opposed to uh microsoft paint because you might be like me and you might settle for it and it's good to try and push yourselves even though it might be a little overwhelming at first but it is something that gives you a lot of room space to grow once you learn the basics in my opinion all right i think that'll be the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed leave a like subscribe and i hope to see you guys next time Bye bye